Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I? Unless someone guides you. And he invited Peter to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before it shared, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice would delight him. Who can describe his veneration? For his life is taken away from the earth. Do you not ask Philip? About whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is the water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the large Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at his altar, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Hey, what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for today is found on page 4 in your bulletin, Psalm 22, verses 24 to 30. We will read it responsibly to the full verse. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The Lord shall be satisfied, satisfied. And, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. The things of the Lord rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down thus fall before him. I go to him. I ascend the It shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deed that he has done. The second reading is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son onto the world so that we might live through him. In his, this is love. Not that we love God, but that we love us and sent his son to the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that he is the Son of God. And they are abiding God, so we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abide in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but person love has out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. 
and who ever swear has not reached perfection in love. We love because we first love them. Those who say, I love God, and hear their brother or sister, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and as, as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Is that better now, the sound? It, um, we're having trouble with this this morning, as you can tell. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Now, I know we just heard the first letter of John just a few minutes ago. But as I thought about this, this particular reading from 1 John, and between this and the gospel reading are some of my favorite readings in all of scripture. And I kept thinking about 1 John and think it's almost like a love letter from God. Now when I read a different translation, because sometimes it's better to hear a second translation when you're, you know, you're so used to use, hearing the new Revised Standard uh, Version, 
my loved ones, let us devote ourselves to loving one another. Love comes straight from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and truly knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Because of this, the love of God is a reality among us. God sent his only son into the world so that we could find true life through him. This is the embodiment of true love. Not that we have loved God first, but that he loved us and set his unique son on a special mission to become an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So my loved ones, if God loved us so sacrificially, surely we should love one another. No one has ever seen God with human eyes, but if we love one another, God truly lives in us. God is love. Anyone who lives faithfully in love also lives faithfully in God, and God lives in him. Love will never invoke fear. Perfect love expels fear, particularly the fear of um, the fear of not having God's love being accomplished in its mission among us. We love God because he first loved God. And then it goes on to say, he gave us a clear command that all who love God must also love their brothers and sisters. We know that, right? We know it. How many of the, us do this really well all the time? And if anyone is raising their hand, you would really be in great denial or actually lying. So, you know, I could recite all of those sins that we all really sink into, and we don't need that. We know what they are. I think we know what they are, and yet we're still stuck in them. And sometimes we are justified or we think we are justified because we think we're right. How many of people do that? <laughs> right? We do. And so what I'm seeing from you all, or at least most of you, not everyone raised your hand, but that you know this. And yet, we have loud geese this morning. <laughs> And they know that too. Um, and I'm sure they're trying to figure out what we're doing out here since we're not usually out here. Okay. Yes, we don't know what they're saying. Amen. Okay. So, now the gospel reading definitely reinforces us. And of course, the first letter of John and the gospel of John are assumed to be written by the same person. So no, you know, the fact that they parallel each other in many ways is not a surprise. And it's about the vine and the branches, a wonderful, wonderful um, parable. And I don't know if those of you who pay attention in the summer where I'm not wearing shoes and socks and long pants, etc. I have a tattoo on my ankle. How many of you remember that from, okay, some of you? The vine and the branches are on that tattoo. That's how much I think it's important. Now, I learned something last night. Usually, all the reading I do for my um, sermon is earlier in the week, as you can imagine. That's when we do it. Um, and there's this one person I love reading, and she generally sends it out early Sunday morning, which is a really horrible time for those of us who preach. Uh, but I do read it on Sunday morning, and last, year, we, last night she sent it out by accident last evening. So I got to really not only read it, and now let's wait for the plane, <laughs> but really 
think and pray about it like I can't generally. And I'm going to say up front, those of you who studied French may know this already, but I have, you know, I've studied a few different languages. One of them was not French. So, remember, we, the Gospels have the words abiding and abode, which is the, you know, the abode is the related to that, and vines. And it's almost like a mixed metaphor, you would think, right? Unless you know French and maybe some other languages that I don't know. But the French actually, I'm recording, the French actually have a word that combines vines and abodes into a single idea. And please forgive my French pronunciation, terroir. I mean, it's, and I can see some people shaking their heads because you've studied French. Terroir, terroir means that the characteristics of habitation, and I'm reading hers now, geography, climate, geology, make their way into the, the wine, the fruit, the milk, the cheese, the vegetables and herbs that grow in that location. Quite literally, terra is dirt, you know, um, terra firma, if you know that Latin. Now, this is her again. The soil of a place produces a unique fruit which bears the taste of the ground itself. Now, not knowing French, but having gone to Hawaii, as you know I did, everything in Hawaii tasted different. And now, I don't, some of you I know have been there, and I don't know if you noticed that, but even I, I have in the morning cacao, I, you know, it's, it's healthy and everything. The ca cacao that is produced in Hawaii has this taste that is present in fruit, in vegetables that are not important and everything. And I can't tell you what the taste is like, but I know it now. And so when she, I read this, I said, oh my God, that's exactly what I experienced. So she, this is Barbara, um, and I'm blanking on her name because I didn't write it down. Vine and abiding or abodes. This is the organic mutuality upon which we depend. So now I'm back to me. What would it look like if God permeated, really permeated all of who we are? All of what we do all of our being. That's what this is asking us to do, to ask God in, in that place, in that place. Frankly, we would, if we did this, we would definitely not believe that we are the center of the world or even the universe, because many of us do. Some, all the time, I will not mention a certain political figure who embodies that. <laughs> but all of us sometimes, and it's when we're stuck in our feelings, we can't get past them even when we're trying. And sometimes the feelings are like, you know, we had two funerals last week. Grief is one, you know, something to expect from that. And telling someone to stop grieving is like telling a, um, a dog to stop barking generally. You know, you can't do that. It's loss. It is really a prime. It's a primary emotion. And we have to inhabit the grief, the loss we're feeling which is like terroir in my bad French. But it really is like that. You can't push the feelings away, but we have to be honest and not sink into them and go to bed for three days, which sometimes we do, to be present what we're feeling. Frankly, if we push away 
feelings like anger, and how many of us get anger? Every single one of us, I'm sure, some of the times. It's just part of life. But sometimes we feel free to act on our anger. Even when God is not wanting us to do that. And I'm not going to tell you this is easy. Sometimes anger is justified. I mean, someone's done something wrong. Or there's a system in this country and maybe other places of institutionalized racism. Institutionalized. And I'm blanking on the word because I'm off the, the written story. Um, misogyny, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Institutionalized homophobia, transphobia. We institutionalized everything. It's in the entire culture from laws sometimes to, still to even unstated things where people do not look at themselves. I'm not telling you I know the in, entire answer because if, the, if I could figure the answer out, it would have been simple enough that 200 other people would have been able to figure it out before me. But I am going to tell you, regardless of all of this, we are called